Did you know that right now inside all of us, a beautiful musical play is taking place? It sounds like this, and it looks like this. It is our amazing heart. It's made up by several billion cells. And all these cells are like participants in an orchestra. And like any other orchestra, a maestro is needed to keep the right pace. Inside the heart, the maestro is called the sinus node. And its job is to produce electrical signals, causing the heart to beat and pump blood more than 100,000 times a day. For most of us, it will work perfectly throughout the long life. But perfect hearts don't interest me. As a doctor, and luckily for you, I have a morbid interest in sick hearts, so you still can live a long life. Many diseases can affect the heart, but I'm interested in something called heart rhythm disorders, and there are many of them. But atrial fibrillation is the one that really has my attention, and there are several reasons for that. First of all, it is the most common heart rhythm disorder in the world, and it's an increasing global health problem. Secondly, many people have it, but they don't feel they have it because they don't feel any symptoms. And thirdly, it costs our society billions and billions each year due to all the complications that can arise. A common complication is a stroke. Well, you heard correctly. Atrial fibrillation is actually a common cause of stroke. Let me explain you this connection. You see, the problem in atrial fibrillation is that the maestro is missing. And this results in electrical chaos, which causes irregular heartbeats, disturbing the blood flow, and as a result, blood clots can form. These clots can follow the bloodstream from the heart to the brain, where they get stuck, restricting the blood flow, and a stroke is a fact. You think this is disturbing? In that case, I totally agree with you. But on the bright side, effective medications can prevent this. Therefore, international guidelines recommend screening people at risk for complications like this. And by that, I mean people who are 65 or older with additional diseases. But how this screening should be organized is unclear. We need to change that. So the key question is, how can we, in a simple way, detect atrial fibrillation and treat it before complications like this arises? Well, in order to detect and diagnose any type of heart rhythm disorder, we need to take a picture of the electrical signals inside the heart. And to do that, we use a special camera called an ECG, and the ECG gives us a graphical presentation of these signals, which we doctors can use to analyze and decide if there is something wrong with the heart rhythm. An ECG is typically done like this. You lay on the bench with a bunch of electrodes attached to your body, and this gives a perfect picture. But it only provides a snapshot of the heart rhythm. So what's happening before or after this picture is taken is unknown. Another huge problem with atrial fibrillation is that it's not necessarily present all the time, as it can come and go, and when it will appear can be highly unpredictable. We therefore need equipment that can do a long-term recording, meaning a videotape instead of a picture. And this is especially important in people who don't feel any symptoms when this is happening. Today, the equipment used for this purpose is actually a well-working system, but it has some limitations. First of all, you need a referral from a doctor to another doctor in your local hospital. 
Then after weeks of waiting, you physically need to go over there, pick it up, and get help with mounting the cables and the device. Then after one, maybe three days of recording, you physically need to go back and deliver it. The results will later be analyzed by using a special program on a computer in the hospital by a hospital doctor. This is time consuming, resource intensive, and expensive. And since not many of these devices are available, it's not suited for large scale screening. Therefore, in the search to simplify this process, and thanks to the dedication and great collaboration between the local hospital and the university here in southern Norway, a new heart sensor has been developed. The ECG 24-7 smart heart sensor. It's a small wireless sensor you simply apply on your chest, connect it to your phone, and all the data are sent in real time to a virtual database. So while this continuously records your heart rhythm, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can live a normal daily life. And on top of that, it automatically does all the job of analyzing the results thanks to artificial intelligence. So both you and your doctor can get an instant digital report without the need to attend your doctor's office in person. This great technology truly inspired us to create a project to see, is it possible to use this device to detect atrial fibrillation on a large scale in people at risk for complications? So we came up with a perfect plan. I would travel to the five largest cities in Norway to establish pickup points where people could pick up the heart sensor. And since the participants we searched for had to be at least 65 or older, the plan was, of course, to recruit them by using the local newspaper and the radio. But then the COVID pandemic came, resulting in a global lockdown. And sadly, this made us believe that we now had to wait before we could realize our project. But luckily, I have a colleague, and he's a really brilliant and enthusiastic guy. And both of us really wanted to realize this. So we sat down, started to think, and now we came up with a crazy plan. Let's make the project all digital, where all the communication will be online, and the heart sensor we send by mail home to each participant, which they have to apply on themselves in order to record their heart rhythm in their living room. And after the test, they will receive a digital feedback of the results. We were super excited about this, but my colleague, he was a bit concerned about reaching out and recruiting enough people. So he asked me a bit skeptical. So Edward, how are we going to recruit people at 65 for a project? where they have to self-apply a medical device in the middle of a global pandemic? Well, I didn't have a very good answer, but I think I said something like this. Let's try to be a bit untraditional and see how we can utilize the social media. I then received a quite skeptical, yeah, uh, maybe. Let's focus on the newspaper and the radio. You have to remember, they are elderly. Anyway, we got the green light and started to promote the project in newspaper and radio. But only a few people signed up, so one day I decided to create a Facebook page. And I bought a small advertisement. The day after, my colleague called me and asked me, if I had done something. Since suddenly 50 new participants had signed up for the project and we hadn't been advertising in the radio or the newspaper. I told him about my little experiment. And now he turned less skeptical and became quite enthusiastic. 
about this approach of recruiting people. I therefore contacted one of the sponsors of the study, who agreed to advertise our project using their big social media channels. And the resulting effect was like an explosion. In less than 48 hours, almost a thousand people from all over Norway signed up. Wow! I was out of words. This luxury problem actually forced us to withdraw the advertisement and shut down the registration system until we could figure out a better way to balance our capacity with the number of included people. So you can say, we were a bit more prepared a few weeks later when we reopened the registration system. But in the end, by using this all digital approach, we successfully screened and communicated with several thousand people from all over Norway, demonstrating that thanks to new technology and the advantages of the digital age, it is possible to offer a vital nationwide healthcare service in a whole new way, even during a global lockdown. So if you are thinking, the older someone are, the more skeptical and difficult they are to handle technology. I can guarantee that's not necessarily true. Although we need to be realistic, let's instead continue to educate, offer proper guidance, and have some trust in the capabilities of our patients, regardless of age. Then, hopefully, we can reach even more people, so all of us can take part in preventing strokes by using a simple self-test to detect hearts with a missing maestro from the comfort of our living room. Thank you. <laughs>